Yes, sir, you can proceed now. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. Hi, once again, welcome you all to the Data Heart session by Analytics Media uh, on the topic uh, Advanced Resume Shortlisting Using Data. Right. So, so the agenda of the session goes like this, right? A quick self introduction, I think, has uh, already given it. So, what is the problem statement that we are going to cover today? What is the proposed solution? What is my proposed solution? And what is the solution architecture? And uh, how did I collect the training data? And how did I convert the training data with the labeled column? And how did we pre-process the data? And, uh, and there was some process of uh, converting the, uh, the training data to a JSON file and converting to a SPACI file, right? And how to set up the config file, right, for the SPACI. How to train the model, how to evaluate the model. And the last, uh, uh, the, the, so this last step in this uh, project is going to be, what is the percentage match of the job description and the resume, right? So the scope of this session is going, uh, the, the scope of this session is within the spacing, right? I have taken one, one of the uh, topic and I want to cover a business problem in it, right? I don't want to get into the transformers, but I think uh, you will have sessions uh, coming forward and henceforth. But I want to solve a business problem. That's the biggest uh, challenge, right? So solving a business problem. Right, so uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, the introduction is done. So what is the problem statement? So a job posting in the organization receives a massive number of applications within a short, short span of time. So we all agree. So if there is an opening, so there will be uh, the people who, is, who are gonna apply for uh, whatever the job posting is there, right? So people are going to apply, uh, apply for the job without changing the key skills, Without uh, altering the resumes, whether are we, uh, are, we, uh, are we even suitable for that job posting uh, or not? Right. So the problem have what problem happens here is so uh, so as an HR, the hiring manager and uh, the the HR professional, we are going to spend a lot of time. In it, right. So the way we hire people has changed drastically over over the years. So we have uh, advertised in newspapers. Right. So. Uh, at least and 15, 20 years back, we used to put it in classic ways, right? So uh, advertising newspapers, wrote, uh, the radio broadcasting, and we used to take the resumes to various different organizations, uh, standing in queue, right? So uh, the, the latest generation is not even thinking of standing in the queue for attending an interview. So we are going to stand for over uh, 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 two hours, three hours, one day, uh, over six plus hours, right? To attend a single interview, right? So uh, nowadays it has progressed and, uh, and it's in paradigm shift. So you sit in your uh, place and you're going to apply it somewhere. You can join the workforce from anywhere, right? So you can work from anywhere. So the culture has entirely changed. So 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 the uh, the way uh, if I was from Chennai, so and if I had to come to office, right? So the people who are to travel to uh, travel for the interview will be within the regions of Chennai. So hardly within uh, the regions surrounding the states, right? So uh, hardly people from uh, uh, the Delhi uh, and the Kolkata. So people are not willing to move, right? And nowadays uh, the culture is completely different. So for a single job posting, you can expect the people applying for that is very much higher in number compared to how it was like uh, at least a decade back. Right? So the manual screening here is uh, it will lead out uh, missing out the rice applicants. And, and there is a possibility to pick up an unsuitable candidate for it, right? We all agree. Now, <clears throat> I have a question for you, right? So a manual screening will lead us to missing out the right, right applicant. So is it a false positive or is it a false negative? And picking out the unsuitable applicants for the job, which is a false positive and which is a false negative? Can you please make use of the chat window? Let's see the user's response. Okay, false positive is unsuitable candidate. So which is more vulnerable here? We are, which is the type one error, which is the type two error? Let's see how, uh, how we keep we are. False positive, false positive type one error, right? So, <clears throat> We always go with the same, the type two error is more vulnerable. The false negative is causing a lot of trouble. So uh, uh, look at this problem statement. So you hire one unsuitable candidate, 
So it's going to be a mess in the team, right? So the false positive is more vulnerable in this situation, right? So leaving out the candidate is okay, but still uh, it's a huge loss for the organization. But picking in wrong candidate is, uh, is you know, uh, as a hiring manager. So, uh, you, you know, the pain, right? So uh, we don't want to pick an, an, an uh, unmatched candidate and we don't want to suffer either, right? It's a pain for the candidate and pain for the Right, so here the manually filtering out the resumes proven to be time consuming both for the hiring manager as well as the HR professional. Right, so uh, yes, we have discussed it. So it would be in boon if the applicant resumes are parsed and we summarize the key entities for the recruiter. Look at this uh, problem statement. So we have two steps to achieve this. I receive the applicant, the, I, I receive the resumes, and I'm going to parse the resumes. What is parsing here? In turn, I'm going to pick the right entities, extract the entities, and summarize the key entities from the resume. So what is an entity here? The entity as in like the name, the organization, what is the years of experience? What is the key skills? What is my LinkedIn profile? What is my GitHub profile? Right, so if, uh, so you know, right, so the resumes come uh, in various different formats. Right, it's not only restricted to uh, the uh, uh, your uh, PDF, the Word. We could re receive the uh, profiles from the LinkedIn, from the GitHub, and various different formats. We can get the uh, nowadays. Uh, you have an API which you can connectly uh, you can connect directly to the Nokri or various different uh, the hiring platform. Right, so and you can import all the resumes. Right, so uh, with a single connect, you can take all the resumes from the various different websites. Right now, I have a possibility, right, uh, for a single position which needs to be uh, filled up in next one week or next one month, which is a uh, ready to fill a position, right? So I have over uh, I mean, uh, hundreds and two hundreds of resumes, right? Hundreds of resumes. So it's going to be in pain for me, right? So let's see. So first step, I'm going to parse and convert it to a structured format in a universal format, whether it can be PDF. A word, a LinkedIn, GitHub, whatever format you're going to give it to me, I'm going to parse it and I'm going to have the entities which is only of my interest. I'm going to show you the 10 different entities that I have. Right. So this is the step number one. What is the step number two? As soon as I get the entities in the structured format that I have, I'm going to convert it to a vector. So what's a vector here? What's a vector? How can I convert a text to a vector? So. Uh, can you please make use of the chat? What is a vector format? How can I convert a text into a word to vector? Okay. Uh, TFIDF, perfect. So, yeah, there, there are various different ways. So, glow, TFIDF, right? So, I'm going to make use, on, I'm going to convert the JSON to a vector format using the TFIDF or the various formats that we have, right? So, uh, for this, uh, the problem statement, I have taken TFIDF, the term frequency. Inverse document frequency, right? So we know what is in term frequency. We will discuss that in detail. So now, what is the uh, solution that I'm proposing here? Uh, did I get rid of this? Yeah. So the key solution is that the project intends to automate the hiring process by ranking the most suitable candidate for that opening by giving a similarity index between the job description and the applicants, right? As an outcome of the step number one. I have a format in the JSON. I have the JSON format. It is parsed and it is structured, and I'm I'm, I'm converting to a vector format. What's what what next? I'm going to convert the job description also into a vector format. Now I have two vectors, all the resumes in the vector format, and I have the jo job description in the vector format. Right? What next? I'm going to use a cosine similarity and distance-based matrix. Right? In cosine similarity to look for a similarity between the uh, the uh, the uh, the receive and the job description so this is a solution a simple solution i'm not getting i'm not getting into complex solution i can use a deep learning i can use and word i can use a transformer i can get i can use whatever i want so uh, so this simple solution can fulfill your business need right so that's the uh, that's the speciality of this uh, uh, the, the the project and the solution right so the key features is like uh, the natural language processing to extract the relevant in information from unstructured and wide ranging formats of the resume, right? And rank the applicants by using the content-based recommendation 
that uses a vector space model and similarity check between the job description and the result that we have, I have explained to you clearly. Right. So, what is the uniqueness of the solution? Right. So, so far, what uh, the automation, what people are doing is to take the key entities and and search for the uh, the, the key skills. Is it present in, in the uh, in the resume that you are going to share? Right. If the skill is there, okay. If the skill is not there, then straightforward is going to be rejected. Right. So. Uh, uh, that's how it is, right? So the keywords here is the NLP, the national, uh, the, the name entity recognition, the resume parsing, the cosine similarity, the TFID for the mission, right? Okay. The solution architecture, uh, the, the solution architecture. So I receive the uh, resumes in various different formats. I do the entity classification, uh, the data segmentation, the tokenization, the feature tagging, and I convert into an resume. I, I convert the resume into a summarized form. What is the summary for me? I have the feature recognition to the feature extraction. Okay, so once the features are extracted, then I convert into a vector form. It's it's a vectorization. Once it is vectorized, I'm, I'm having the text converted into a matrix form and there is some numbers for calculation. Now I have a job description in the other side. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to vectorize it. Uh, that, that could be one more box here in vectorization. And I'm going to do a similarity, cosine similarity of the vectorized format of the resume and vectorized format of the job description. And I could rank order the categories. So this is the solution architecture and uh, straightforward. Anyone can understand in uh, simple layman terms of an architecture. Right, so you can post your questions. So yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, go ahead. So uh, how, uh, how can we verify the model is working correct? Yes, uh, we have a metric, the evaluation metric that's in place. I, I can also share you the evaluation. Whether it is right or wrong, um, we'll also see. There is an option in the space that you can do it. Right? So, so how did I, uh, I come up with the training data? So I've collected over 200 plus of uh, resumes for the uh, preparation of the training data. So it's dependent on uh, your capability and scope, right? To the resume, the input data, uh, how much ever the data that you have, the more the data, better the NLP model. The problem, and there's a plus and a minus with this NLP, right? So the training data for all the NLP models should be as clean as possible. It's not like your, it's unlike your cross-sectional data that you used to work uh, uh, for the other uh, other models, for the other uh, the, our tree-based models or the random forest models. The NLP is going to expect and clean and uh, error-free training data, right? So the problem, uh, the, the pain point here is uh, the getting the training. Right, so I'm going to uh, collect 200 resume. You can collect it, right? Converting into training data is going to be pain. I'll show you uh, uh, how am I how have I done it? How have I collected it? Right. So <clears throat> uh, quickly moving to okay, uh, this is disconnected. Okay, anyway, I'll show it to you. So the data pre the the, the data pre processing, right? So whatever resumes I have. So what all steps that I follow? Uh, wait, let me go. So I've converted to lowercase and I've removed all the special characters. Okay. And you put it in a loop and uh, you remove all the special characters here. And you, uh, whatever uh, there is, an, uh, whatever it's coming in the next line, so you'll have the reject, right? So I remove that and I put it in a proper format. So what happens here? The next is stop word removal. So we know what is in stop word. So what is in stop word? So any uh, any messages? So Balbir, uh, uh, so Balbir to answer that. So so the, the cosine ma ma measures the similarity between two texts. So it measures the similarity between the two vectors, right? So the two vectors, the data is converted into two vectorized format. The TF-IDF of the resume, TF-IDF of the job description. Then I'm going to do the, co uh, the cosine set. Right? The cosine similarity cannot work with text. So therefore, I convert into a vector format. That's the purpose of converting to a vector format. Uh, okay. Next, uh, you're going to remove the stop words. So what's uh, what's the purpose of removing the stop words? That was the moving to the chart. How do you convert? How do you remove all the stop words? The stop words doesn't carry any meaning. So like uh, it's all the connection words, right? So I'm going to parse the resume. My business goal is to parse the resume 
I don't want to have any stop words. Right? I remove the stop words and I haven't and clean data. Right? So once I've converted the data, you can put it in a loop. You put it into a loop uh, uh, and there are a following sequence. You have an, uh, the word lemmatizer. You can use a stemming or you can use a lemmatizer, lemmatization, right? So lemmatization converts the word to a lemma in root word. Then, uh, <clears throat> so what is a lemma? So you convert any word to a root word accounting the parts of speech. That's what your lemmatization is. If you do not account the parts of speech, that's your, uh, the, the poor customer. Right? So you use a uh, word like uh, lemmatization. So you convert to the root words and you have the text. So this is an example for one resume, right? So we have taken one resume and this is how your resume is going to be, right? You copy, you can put it into a loop. Ideally, you can put it into a loop. So I have another file. So you can put it into a loop and you can convert, you, make, you can make it all into a list of resume. Right? So once you have the list of resume, you convert it to a text document. Like uh, you put it to a text document like this. Right? So once you put it into the text document, there are three ways. There are three solutions uh, that, are, that are that is available. So there are two uh, solutions. These are uh, created by the technology uh, from GitHub. It's an open source. Uh, there's some guy who has uh, created this tool and he has put it in. Uh, the GitHub for free. Another is your uh, the Agar Tech team. So they have also created it and they have put it in, uh, uh, in uh, the GitHub for free. Right? So these are the two different tools. Another tool is going to be a manual process. So this tool, the Agar Tech team, so it, uh, uh, you cannot process in a loop here and it takes a lot of time and you can see that it is going uh, beyond the scope. So uh, one tool is the NER annotator from the tech tool, right? So I can share this. Uh, uh, the, the the link the the uh, the pair presentation at last right so what you're going to do here so uh, i have the entities right so first of all i can go here before this i can show you what are the entities right <coughs> uh, i'm sorry to switch back so I'll, I'll quickly show you what are the entities that i have figured out right so the entities are the annotated entities are annotated manually using the tools uh, like uh, the notepad plus plus or the vs code or the prodigy is an uh, is an premium it's an enterprise version tool and the technology that i'm going to show and i get it again right so these are the possible ways that you can annotate your resume what is annotation you have your resume and you have figured out the entities that you want to do for uh, uh, your your project right so you want to do uh, the resume screening using these key entities what are these key entities the name the designation the contact number, the email address, the core skills, the degrees, the companies you have worked with, and the location. So these are the entities that I have picked up. So if you have more entities, you can add more entities. It is customizable. So and you can uh, add the entities in the resume, and you can retrain the model. That's the beauty of this simple solution. Right? Anyone can use this, and they can and they can customize it for their organization. Right? And if you go back here. I've, I, I have added all these entities. Uh, and there, there could be a few more entities which I have uh, tested it out. The name, email address, mobile number, the skills, college name, degrees, designation, the company's work, that years of experience, graduation year, location, LinkedIn profile. Right. So <clears throat> you can see how this works. You can select uh, this. Okay. You can select what is the entity that you want to uh, do. It's an uh, it's a designation. And you're going to select the designation, right? So, and this is your name. You select name, and you're going to do the name, right? So, the biggest challenge is your patience. Right? It's going to take a lot of time because these are manually annotated. So, you're going to customize it for your own need, right? So, that's where it is. You you cannot uh, take a uh, data source from. Uh, uh, or you cannot download in data set. If you want to customize it for your own organization, for your own need, so you are going to annotate these resumes for all the resumes that you are going to collect. If you have 100 resumes, 200 resumes, this is the uh, challenging activity, the collection of the training data. See, here you, you may say like, uh, yeah, it's very simple. What is, the, uh, what is the big challenge? The problem here is we do not want to overlap the character. So what is the output here? You can see. 
Govardhana K Senior Software Engineer Bengaluru Karnataka, right? So this is taken from Indian.com. So just a random uh, data set. So you can see 0 to 12 characters is name. What is 0 to 12? From here to here, you should not consider these two. Okay, so leave this. So see here, the, uh, the position 1, 2, position 11. I want to keep till position 12. So this is the name form, right? If in case, if there is a character overlap, right? Even a single character overlap, right? Your space is going to throw an error, right? So, so the, the, the problem here is the, uh, the automatic annotation is fancier. It can do, it can work. It can only reduce your, it can only upload your work. Right? You have to go back manually. If there is an error, Instead of resumes, which is throwing an error, the space is not able to pick up. You have to come back, put it into the notepad plus plus, and you can check the character which is causing a problem. Right? So I know the collection of training data is a bit painful uh, when you're working with uh, the, the named data recognition because this is your own customized. Right? So uh, <coughs> at the rate is a special character. So you don't have to give the other rate. You can leave the other rate. I'm not giving, uh, uh, I'm not giving at the rate, right? So go back here. So you, you can customize. So that's C U T. So you can give, you can give the characters that you do not want. There is no other rate, right? <clears throat> so yeah. So this is how you're going to collect the training data. Whatever the data that you are having, you're going to collect the training data with the entities of your own interest. Right. So if your organization emphasis on uh, the, the entity to be different, so you can change the entity that you want. Right. So, so that, that's how uh, uh, we have collected the training data. I'm coming back to the presentation here. So the data pre-processing, read the PDF file, you remove the, uh, the special characters, you remove the stop words, the conversion to the root words, removal of extra spaces or lines, like I've showed you. And training are the NER pipeline. So what is an NER? NER is the named entity recognition. So what is uh, uh, NER going to do? So what is a uh, named entity? So by default, the spacing is going to give you a named entity. Right? So you can ask a question. So by default, uh, yeah, Spacey can give all these things for you. What am I doing? Right. So it's a custom in here. What I've built is a custom in here. So <clears throat> that could not be an entity uh, like a, like a, a core skill, an email address, or a contact number. The Spacey may not know what is an email address. That there will be a set of entities by default in the space. It's a generic. And what we are going to do is a custom in here. So that's the difference here. So the data preparation with labels, hmm, I can use a laser pointer. So the data preparation with labels and conversion of data into the spacey format, right? So in the spacey version, the latest version, version three. So in previous version, the format was different. So in this latest version, version three, so the you have to convert it to an, uh, the spacey format. That's the uh, the document format. I'll show it to you shortly. And if there is some, there is an overlap in the characters. Uh, if there is an overlap between the characters in the entity, right, the spacey format is going to throw an error, right? So therefore, you have to go back and correct it, and uh, and and you'll have to uh, 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 convert the document back into the spacey format going back, on, right? So this is going to be a bit time-consuming. Uh, uh, if you have an, a smarter solution, it's well and good. So uh, this is the standard uh, way, right? So if you if you if you can prepare your own tool, that's great. Right. So this is the standard way uh, that uh, you are going to feed an input to the custom India for the spacing. Now creating a config file with the parameters. Okay. So what is a config file? I'll show it to you. So what is a config file from the spacey? How are we going to create a config file? What is the base config file? What is the config file? How can you uh, uh, change the parameters in the config file for your uh, model training? So once that is done, you're going to train the data. And going next, right? So the data format used in Spacey is uh, especially version three is the binary format, the document format, created 
by serial, uh, serializing the top bit. So you call that as a top bit or an, uh, the spacing for them. So the extension of this binary uh, files is the dot spacing, and they're used in the input format for specifically the process. Right, so you get the text data, you tokenize the data, the tagger, and you put the named entity recognizer, and you get the doc, the doc bit. I'll quickly show it to you. Uh, how to use stop words lemmatization if you have resume more than one language. Okay, I'll show it to you. <clears throat> okay. All right, so yeah, uh, okay. Now going back here, now I'll go back to the file. I don't know, this is push. <clears throat> okay, uh, so before that, I wanted to show uh, what is the NER, what NER cannot do, why are we using it? Uh, the custom NER, right? So you're gonna import the spacey and by default, so there are various different models available. So in that, I'm going to pick a uh, library with EN Core Web SR. So what is EN? EN stands for English here. This core stands for the vocabulary, the syntax entities. Your web stands for the written text, the blogs, news, the comments. And uh, the, the SM is the size, that's uh, the size, the 12 and the, right? So this is the, this is the, this is loading in pre-trained model. I'm making use of the pre-trained model in this space. So if you see at various different sources, they have to use this in core web SM. So this is nothing but a pre-trained model, right? What we are going to do is we are going to train our own model. So that's the difference, right? So the doc here is a service run works in it, right? So you can see service run is a proper node, works as web, uh, the, the verb, in is ADP. LD entry is a noun. So what is an ADP? What is an verb? What is PROPN? If you do not know where to do, so I'll share you the link as well. There is a POS tax, parts of speech tag, right? So if you see PROPN, right? So it's the proper noun, right? A proper noun is the noun that I the name, a part of the name of the unique entity. So if, <clears throat> if we have to go back and recollect our grammar, right? So uh, we can make use of this link. So there is a separate link for PO stacks. What is a proper noun? What is a noun? What is a verb? Right? Or, or uh, in other words, uh, if we don't know what is this short from PROPN, right? we, we may know what is a proper noun. We may not know what is PROPN. So at uh, that time, this will be an easy to right? go back and understand what is PROPN or what is this ADP. Right? All this are some weird names. right? So ADP, add position. Right, so uh, the prepositions, right? So you call it as a preposition, in other words. The, the ADB, the adverb, right? So <clears throat> you can make use of, uh, maybe I'll share it at last. So you can make use of that link and you can understand what is that uh, that is happening, right? So so we see that the PO stacks for the name entities are actually identified. Now uh, let's let's a bit more complicated, right? So let's see how the, what is the output of the NER system is basically to understand. So I am putting what is the ENT label? What is the entity label? So entity label is giving me as GPE. What is GPE again? So uh, yeah, the GPE stands for the geopolitical entity. Actually, it's a name. It should have shown it as a person, right? It's a proper noun. In that proper noun, this is the PO star. What is the entity? What is the label? It is not showing it as a person, rather it is showing it as a geopolitical entity. This is not right. Right, Savage Baron is not in geopolitical, it's a person, it's the name of the person. So it do not know, the space do not know, it, it may not have, in the model they have trained, they will not have trained my name. Right, so there is a chance that uh, uh, my name was not tested anywhere. Right, so uh, in the default training, it is left. So, <laughs> Uh, uh, so we did find some entities, but clearly we missed it. We, we missed the name. They're showing it as a GPE, geopolitical entity. That's not right. Now let's see how smart uh, the uh, uh, the space is trying to work. So I give Doctor Saveshwar. So I'm not a doctor, but still I'm just trying it out. So Doctor Saveshwar. So you can see it's taking it as a proper noun, and it has recognized Saveshwar as a person. Why so? Because it knows 
whatever comes after doctor is an person right so that's how they have trained the bot right so even though you you, you could see it's a gp here geopolitical entity so just because the dr is present here it has recognized my name as a person so whatever so what does it mean so whatever the name that we give that after dr is going to show it as a person right in another problem let's take statue of liberty is situated in new york the statue the proper noun of uh, the preposition the proper noun and yes so we are getting all the parts of speech here so and again let's check the label now the new york it is showing it as a geopolitical perfect usa it is showing it as a geopolitical right so and uh, we are missing out various different aspects uh, uh, yeah so it was showing the statue as uh, one word so the statue has yeah so it has not recognized the statues right now th there is one more uh, thing that you can learn here from the new and york it's in two uh, it's in broken word it's in proper noun and in proper noun. what we can even make it as into one conversion to one i o b for what is an i o b inside beginning and out right so the new is in beginning and i is uh, the your is an insight and whatever is coming out right it's all o. right so these are uh, the entities that it has recognized and uh, it's an, uh, it is giving iob format so the iob format is very important for your name bit right so even, even though i have not used it so uh, if you want to further more explore from the solution that i'm going to give you can give an iob uh, the recognition and <coughs> you can Right, you can retrain the model using Casper analytics or various different models, so it could even perform better. So I wanted to know what is an IOB. Various different folks know here. I can definitely see, right? So, and where else can I use this NLP? Uh, the the NER here. Say I have an email, so I have uh, this email source from it. Right? So it's an open source. Uh, the the email, so it's a data set. I have an email, dear family. Uh, I have changed our date, so we are going home. So I have an email. I want to annotate. I want to mask the email. <laughs> so I want to mask the email. So in this masking, look at the beauty. So if I give the entity label wherever there is a person, wherever uh, you recognize it as a person, I'm going to anonymize it. I'm going to uh, uh, mask the names that is present in the email. right so if there are uh, names that it does not recognize we can build in custom india right so uh, it's just a uh, heads up and an overview about the india and quickly uh, i wanted to show about the pivot stacks but let's jump into the solution and uh, let's complete the agenda and then come to the other section of this uh, where is the solution yeah here <coughs> so uh, i have installed all the required libraries and and i have uh, imported all the libraries here so i have put the test data okay so this is the test data so and i'm going to give this test data in the, in the format that is required for the conversion of the space here converting it to all to a json format right so so what does it 1213 18 and which is in skills so what does this mean quick recollect so what is this numbers and what is this entity what is this can anyone put it in the chat it is the start and end okay it's the entity type and the position uh, in that line right in 982 character starting with the name of the degree and 985 it's ending the degree 986 to 997 it's the name of the institute right and similarly see look at this i have different entities here the name companies work that skills degree graduation here i have all these entities so and <clears throat> i have put the annotations right so i have put all the annotations which i have collected as part of my training data right so you can you can put it in a separate file and you can call it as json right so uh, 
I've just copy pasted in the last one. So you can see here, <coughs> you can use an empty model or you can load an encore model. So here for the conversion to a doc win, I'm, con I'm taking the encore web lesson, right? And you can see I'm converting all this data to one spacey format. This is the doc bin object. The doc bin object, that is what this spacey is requesting us to do. Uh, yeah, so uh, this, this is what a conversion to the spacey file. Someone asked the, asked the question. So the conversion to spacey file is nothing but conversion to the top bin object, right? So in previous versions, we had to create the pipeline, uh, a create pipeline, add pipelines into the previous uh, spacey versions. In this latest spacey version, version three, right? It may change in the latest uh, the spacey version four, but in the current version, they are expecting your data to be in doc bin or the doc bin object. Right, all the data, whatever uh, you are going to feed into uh, this, uh, the doc bin, this loop is going to be a JSON file. I'm converting this JSON file into a spacey file. Right, so as an output to this, you can see I will have something called as a spacey, the train dot spacey. Whatever file you have sent, it is going to convert to a spacey file. Now you can save the spacey file directly for future reference, right? You don't have to uh, give it every time. You don't have to uh, go back and do it. So once it is done, convert it to a space file. So step number one, you're going to have a separate JSON file. Step two, you're going to have a separate train file. Whenever then you're going to add a lot of uh, resumes into a JSON. So <clears throat> you're going to rerun this document object. So you will have a new space file. You're going to overwrite this train file, right? So the J JSON file is going to be in a separate uh, file and the train is going to be in separate format. And I have this config. What is this config file? If you go here in this training pipeline and uh, uh, in, into the, directly to this uh, spacey website, I can explain this a lot, right? So or maybe I could give in small uh, heads up. So I'm giving in training data. What happens behind the screen here? The text label, and it's going to use a gradient descent and it's using a model. So what happens behind spacey? Spacey is using a neural network and it is using a gradient descent optimizer. Right? So it is estimating the gradient of the loss. So what is the gradient of the loss? It does some back, back propagation, right? So we all know what is the back propagation for the forward, the feed forward and the back, back propagation, the beauty of the neural network, right? <clears throat> uh, so the back propagation that happens when I'm going to use an optimizer such as a gradient is an optimizer, right? So you, the model is built and it is going back and continuously correcting the errors, the back propagation. It's going back and changing the text and label you put the optimizer. So, you know, obviously, I'm, I cannot get into the, the back propagation, the loss functions and the, the derivations. So, uh, the, the overall idea behind the screen, it is using a neural network and it is using an optimizer to uh, reduce the uh, cost. Right? So, that's happening behind the space. <clears throat> right? So, uh, like I mentioned, uh, the space is uh, promoting this prodigy. It's the prodigy annotation tool. Right? I know it's going to be time consuming. So that's where they have given this Prodigy annotation tool, right? So uh, uh, it, it is an enterprise version, right? So uh, it's uh, you have to pay some premium for this. And uh, yeah, coming down here, you are going to collect this uh, the spacey train, and I'm I'm, uh, I'm going to take the config file directly, right? I'm I'm constructing the explanation of the spacey, and I'm getting how am I going to get this uh, config file here? So once you once you get here, you can select what is the language of your own interest. Right? You have the in, the uh, the current NER is going to support so many different languages. I I even taken a different uh, link. What all languages it is going to support? Yeah, you can see at present what are the language supports. Pre previously, right, we didn't have a huge language support like this. Now you can see the the language support uh, is uh, enormous. 
you can see there is some huge language support uh, in PC, right? So obviously uh, a lot of challenges are going to be there, but the language support for this PC is uh, supported in the list of languages that's mentioned there, right? So you can see here, and <clears throat> you can select the language of your interest. The component that I'm going to select here is the NER. And what is the hardware? If you have GPU, it's a GPU transformer. And what is the op optimize? You're going to optimize for efficiency or for accuracy. So accuracy is the interest area of interest point. So I give accuracy. And you can edit or you can directly download this first. You click on this download file. Okay. So you can keep on your config file is ready. Right. So previously we didn't have a, such an easy uh, thing to do. So your config file is ready. Now you are, if your config file is ready, now you can, this is the config file that I have downloaded. So what is uh, present inside this config file? It's going to take the vector the n core web design. So obviously this uh, package is going to be uh, downloaded. We are, we are going to support, uh, we are going to download this. The language is English. The pipeline is token to VEC and the India that, that's the end screen. The batch size is 1000, right? And coming down here, uh, okay, where is the training? Okay, I, I can explain a lot here. Coming down to training, uh, keeping the, the interest of time. So you can see the training, the corporate dip, and <clears throat> what is the dropout? What is a dropout? It's a question for you guys. What's a dropout? So what's a dropout? Quickly, quickly. Please make use of the chat. It is used to avoid the of it. So dropout layers is like, it's going to break the dense connections and 10% uh, uh, of the dense connections will be cut down, right? So, and patients, this is the time, the max epochs and giving 2000, uh, that's the default. So you can alter it here. So maximum steps is 20,000, evaluation frequency 200. So this is the important uh, area that you can customize, you can, change, right? So the training batcher, the tolerance you can change, you can put 0.4, you can change the tolerance. What is the, the tolerance amount in, in point in uh, behind which I don't want to, uh, uh, what I don't want to have an uh, error, right? The least error that I want to have is 0 0.2. If it is not reducing uh, uh, more than that, then stop the trend. So that's the tolerance. And coming down here, you, what is the optimizer that I'm going to use? An Adam, right? So an Adam is the default optimizer that we're going to use, right? So and I have a question for you: Is Adam and gradient descent the same? Right. So no. What is the speciality of Adam? What is the speciality of Adam? So it's minimized loss. It uses momentum, perfect, right? So it uses momentum. So there, there's a momentum loss that's present in your gradient descent. So even your stochastic gradient descent as well uh, has that momentum problem. So the atom will be able to take care of this. It's a momentum-based methods. RMS prop, atom, and there are many more, right? So, so as of now, the protectionized and standard or uh, the optimizer is atom, right? So from STD, so atom is reliable. Uh, you can take it to the production level and it's doing a fantastic job, right? And <clears throat> you can see entities uh, FPR, right? So I, I'll explain this shortly. So this is the default what uh, we get it. And I say, I'll tell you what we can do. Let's quickly go here. Uh, we have only some time. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm going to use this format Python and Spacey train config and I'm going to pass this training data, whatever path that I'm going to have. Path of the train, train spacing. Just look at this carefully, nothing, nothing complex. The output of the file, where I want to put it, it's the path, it's the parameterized, right? So it's a parameter that you're passing to this program, the Python M train config. So this config M is your Python program. You give spacey train config file. So it's a parameterized. So parameter for output is output the uh, the uh, uh, the area where you want to share, and the path dot train 
where you have kept your training data and paths is your training uh, train dot space where you have uh, kept your training data the space <coughs> the location which you have put it right so and then you are going to train it definitely it's going to take a lot of time i'm not going to train it here so i'll just show you the output here and if you want to make use of the gpu it's well and good so uh, even for early 50 to 100 resumes it has taken a lot of time so a uh, lot of time as in like uh, uh, to uh, to put it in right it has taken 20 to 25 minutes right so if you want to uh, if you're going to use gpu if you're going to use uh, even more uh, 300 400 resumes so you can, it's better to switch to gpus and coming down here i've put the output file into the model last right model last uh, okay the problem with this google collab is uh, it's often the timeout problem will be there so i can take uh see what, what i've uh, taken us uh, yeah here it is so the saved pipeline to the output directory right so whatever the model is running it is going to automatically save it into your output directory output model last right so <clears throat> the problem with google collab you know the, once the session is expired your files are going to be deleted so it's always wise to download it and keep it in your system for the beginners right so not for everyone most of you may know it but when there is a time board, the google collab is going to delete so whatever file that you have you make sure that it is downloaded it is kept in your google drive or it is kept in your system right somewhere somewhere it is uh, stored actually don't leave it in the google collab right and coming down uh, people have asked about uh, the model evaluation so coming down here uh, right so you can see the python m spacey evaluate there is some function you can see for the tokens what is the nerp nerr nerf what is nerp ner the named entity recognition precision what is the precision named entity uh, recognition recall what is the recall for the model that I'm named entity recognition what is f f1 score right and it also goes to a level for every different entity what is your precision recall and f1 score so this is the beauty now i have in the test data i have purposefully give the i have given a different uh, i have tagged it to a small case skills designation graduation year so you can see uh, the problem here so what the problem it is not able to recognize it properly so in nlp so the training data is uh, very crucial you have to do it in proper ways right so once uh, so this is the summarization so once it is summarized right so uh, it's uh, okay uh, i have taken one sample uh, for this sample it does not recognize the name but you can see it does recognize the degree at the institute okay so i have converted the resume into the entities uh, maybe this resume may not uh, did not have all the details and it does not recognize the name properly we can go back and retrain the model you can see the recall is only 76 percent right so <clears throat> You will get the format. So uh, the idea is to uh, know, right? So it, you will get all the entities for and resume, and then summarize format like this. Once you have the format, once you have the data in the in the summarized format, I'll quickly show you here what happens next. Uh, this is what uh, the, we have shown, and and I can use an, an TF IDF vectorizer to convert into one vector format okay that also i can show it to you here you can see i've converted fit transform i've converted to a count vectorizer i've taken a count vectorizer here and i've used a cosine similarity right so and what is the output so the output would be like this the resume the resume q247 i can give i can uh, rename it to the resume of sarveshwaran is 52.83 percentage match to the job description that you have given for. right this isn't good the resume of 4902 the resume of uh, uh, what ramesh or suresh is 14.06 percentage match to the job description now i can rank order it i can sort this uh, the percentage match now you have your rank ordered resume to your job description 
right? So that is the beauty here. Now you have your uh, rank order, resume, and your job description. Now you can start with rank one, and you keep on going, and in in, a, in, a, in the chronological order, right? So so this is an uh, business application oriented business fulfilling and uh, project, right? And a small project that uh, we can have, right? So I can extend this with a quality training data. I can extend this with a BERT model. I can extend this collecting from uh, LinkedIn data. I can extend this. Uh, you can have a front end to it. You can have an end to end solution, right? So I've given you the crux. What I can cover in one hour, I can give it. Right? Even uh, here, we can customize it more. There is a lot of scope for uh, customization. So yeah, I think we are uh, right on time. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, <clears throat> I hope uh, uh, you like the session. So uh, we'll take some questions and answers and then we'll write up the session, right? So yeah, so 8.30 to 9.30 was the time. So any questions that uh, we can take? I think there are some questions. Yeah, you can use chat GPT. <laughs> Okay, that's an, uh, a different topic for all together, right? So uh, now there is a customization with chat TPT in different ways. You can integrate it. Uh, there is a lot of uh, integration that you can do. How to use top words lemmatization if you have received with more than one language? I think I have answered it. And we have also the training weights. Train weights. Uh, get the train weights. No, we don't get the train weights here. It's uh, the neural network one. We don't get the. So if you want the train weights, you're going to use a custom runner fill. You're going to use a CRF model, right? The conditional random fill will give you your train weights. What are we going to do? Uh, training has already uh, the space. No, uh, Spacey has given the training, but we are doing a custom in here, right? So that's what I want to mention. So of how F1 score is calculated. So uh, it's the harmonic mean of the precision and recall. I assume right two into recession into recall divided by recession plus uh, uh, the precision plus recall will give you your F1 score. So where do the recession? Okay, I think. Uh, um, okay, I think. Uh, yeah. We share. All right. So yeah. I think yes. Uh, I think uh, we had. Uh, yeah, I can, I think people are asking for the link. I can give you the LinkedIn <coughs> where we can also get connected. Right, yeah. I hope you had some takeaway out of the session. That's uh, very much important. So you have spent your one hour uh, in your evening time, right? So living out your family and uh, your dedication, right? So I hope you had some good takeaway out of the session. So uh, that is one thing which will keep me <laughs> happy, right? So, uh, uh, right. So thank you all. Uh, I hope it was informative and you liked the session. The feedback matters a lot. Thank you all. Bye, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, hopefully you have filled in the feedback poll. If not, I request you to please fill in the poll about the feedback as it helps us to conduct more such sessions. Um, the recording of this session will be available on YouTube, as I said earlier. And we will be back with another session of data tomorrow. The link is in the chat section. Uh, till then, bye-bye and keep learning. Thanks, everyone.